Deep within our hearts is a God-given desire to be the best human beings we can be. Christians in every age have identified five core practices that facilitate our transformation into Christ-likeness. Join us as we kick off 2021 by exploring the five practices that lead us towards God's transforming power of our lives. Join us for The Walk, starting online and on-site on Sunday the 10th of January. Greetings once again and welcome to worship. We trust that you had a wonderful Christmas and we are so glad that you're joining us for worship once again today. As a call to worship, I'm going to read to us from the prophet Isaiah, reading from chapter 9 and just reading verses 2 to 4. And this is what the prophet says. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the road of their oppressor, let us pray. And so God, we come before you once again on this day as we gather together to worship you. We pray, Lord, that as we come together uh, using the means of technology, that as we come together, we come together from different locations, but it is your spirit that binds us together and unites us uh, with one another, but also with you. And so as we begin the service of worship, we pray, Lord, that you will breathe life into our worshiping, that through the songs that will be sang and the prayers that will be said, that you might be glorified. We pray for all of this in the name of our Lord, Savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I invite you to worship, to worship with us as we worship God in song. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, no. You are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Fire before us, 
Indeed, God is our lighthouse, and as we continue in worship, we come before God as we confess our sins before God. Let us pray. The wise, the wise ones of old brought you gold, dear heart of gold. Forgive us our hearts of stone. The wise of old brought you frankincense, O divine fragrance. Forgive us our unwillingness to be bearers of your sweet-smelling perfume. The wise ones of old brought you Maya, O Christ who died for our atonement, forgive us our unwillingness to die unto self and to live completely for you. Amen. One of the privileges of worshipping God is that we have this ability to come before God with our gifts and our offerings. And so we're going to offer you a moment uh, to consider what types of gifts you want to bring before God. And we ask you to do this prayerfully. Our banking details will appear on the screen as you do that. You have the choice of either doing that now or doing it at the end of this video as the banking details will also appear on the screen. Hello Eastview, let us pray. Gracious God, you are a God whose giving knows no end. Today we give back to your church, Lord, with hearts filled with gratitude. Make us generous, Lord. Make us compassionate. Make us faithful in your image. Bless these our gifts and the gifts we offer that your kingdom comes and your work be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello Westview. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew 2 verses 1 to 12, verse 16 and verses 19 to 20. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. He had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. 
but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi and secretly and found out from them this exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and his vicinity, who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. The Return of Nazareth after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. This is the word of God. Thanks, Lebu, for that reading. Friends, the season that follows uh, Advent and Christmas is called Epiphany. Our reading today is part of the lectionary reading that is set aside for Epiphany. And so we have just completed a season of waiting and preparing ourselves for the coming of God's light into the world. This is also known as Advent. Some people might wonder why all the fuss about light, because for them the world is already a place that is full of light, a place that is full of joy, a place that is full of all they could ever want or desire. Family, career, success, and sometimes even power. But the reality is that for many people in our world, as well as in our communities, their experience of life in this world is filled or is full of darkness. Theirs has been a life of grief and loss, a life of broken dreams and shattered hopes, a life of failure and shame a life that is filled with a darkness that can and does come at any time. But the world into which Jesus was born was also full of all kinds of this darkness. Many people lived out their lives as slaves of one kind or another. Many people were dependent for their daily bread on the arbitrary generosity of those who owned the majority of the land. And the shadow of the Roman Empire was cast over their whole world, a shadow that was cast by ruthless conquerors who had no conscience about enforcing their will with the edge of a sword or with the point of a spear. For many people in Jesus' day, there was no hope for, of anything better. This darkness had become part of their life. The Jewish people at least had a hope to sustain them. Their prophets sustained that hope for generations and generations. It was the hope that God would bring light into darkness. It was the hope that God would throw off the yoke of every oppressor and set free all those who lived in an unjust captivity. It was the hope that God would restore the people to the land where they could once again 
thrive by the sweat of their own labor, eating the bread made from grain grown in their own fields and fruits grown in trees in their own land. When that happens, old and young would live in safety without fear of either famine or captivity. It was in Jesus that early Christians saw the fulfillment of these hopes. They believed that Jesus would be the one to bring the light they longed for. They believed Jesus was the one who would deliver the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. That is why today the Feast of Epiphany is such an important day in the Christian calendar because it is the day when we commemorate the visit of the Magi to the infant Jesus. That story of that visit was seen as a literal fulfillment of the predictions from Isaiah 60 verse 3, that nations shall come to your light and that kings to the brightness of your dawn. And so for the early Christians, the visit of the Magi was another sign that the light was dawning in the darkness. But there is something more to the visit of the Magi. These men were all pagans, in other words, they were heathens or even Gentiles. They were people who had no connection with the Jewish people. They were people who had no connections with the Jewish prophets. They were people who had no connections with the Jewish hopes. They were people who had no connection even with the Jewish Messiah. And yet, according to our gospel reading for today, they come from afar to pay homage to Mary's child. Now, this is important. It is, impo it is important because from the very beginning, Jesus is worshipped by shepherds and angels, worshipped by commoners and royalty. And perhaps more importantly, Jesus is worshipped by Jews as well as Gentiles. From the very beginning, the light that dawned with the birth of Jesus was a light that shines for all people. This is one of the reasons why Paul rejoiced so much in the light of Christ. Writing in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Verse 6, Paul said the following, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And so everything about our faith is a part of the celebration of Epiphany, Epiphany literally means revealing. It is a taking away of the veil that covers something. Epiphany is about unveiling what Advent promises, that all flesh shall see the salvation of God, that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and that all people shall see it together. It is the promise that in Jesus Christ, light has come into darkness. It is the promise that Jesus Christ himself is the light that shines in darkness. And so during this time of the year, we read stories. We read stories about the life of Jesus. And these are stories that show us how Jesus revealed that he was truly the light and that he was coming into the darkness of our world. That's why we celebrate Epiphany. It's a time to remind ourselves that in him a light has dawned that will never go out. A light of faith, a light of hope, a light of joy that shines in all the kinds of darkness that can afflict this world. Amen. And so let us pray together. 
God, we pray for the church that as we observe the visitation of the Magi to the babe Jesus, we pray for the mission of the church, that the church may lead all people to you as the star led the Magi to you, that we in the church may honor you with our lives, that we may arise like the Magi and search for you, and like them venture even into the unknown and trusting follow where you lead us. As we observe your coming into a world that is politically, socially and spiritually troubled, that we in the church may recognize and celebrate the wonder of your creation, that we may see your hand at work in the world around us and give ourselves to serve you as faithful stewards of your creation and earnest agents for your justice, reconciliation and peace, that the peoples of the world may experience your peace. And we ask for this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we have heard the word of God as it was read to us. We have heard the reflection upon that word. And so now it is our opportunity to respond to this message and to this word. And so I'm going to invite you uh, from wherever you are joining us uh, to relax, uh, to be in a position where you can just allow yourself to feel the presence of God, to allow the Spirit of God to move within that space where you are. And when you are in a relaxed position, I would like to just pose a few questions to you as a way of responding to today's message. Upon arriving at the house in Bethlehem, the Magi are overjoyed. Now this is a powerful word, they are overjoyed. And so as we hear this word that the Magi are overjoyed, we are reminded of the words of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 9 verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And so the Magi began their journey led by a tiny light shining in the night sky and they reached their destination. And so I would like to ask you or to invite you to reflect on the following questions. Have you ever been led towards Jesus? And if you were ever led towards Jesus, can you think about how you were led towards Jesus? There might be somebody special who led you towards Jesus. But maybe you might also want to think about how you could lead others towards Jesus yourself. From the story of the Magi, we also discover that upon discovering Jesus, we are told that the Magi were overjoyed. In other words, coming into contact with Jesus brings joy with it. And so the next question I would like you to consider is what joy have you experienced in your, in your life as a result of accepting Jesus, the light that comes into darkness? And lastly, if Jesus is indeed the light of the world, and if we believe that Jesus is the light of the world, can I invite you to consider what aspects of your life do you want to invite Jesus to shine God's life into? Amen. And now we continue to worship God in song. You are the apple. 
And so once again, it was great to worship God together with you. And so as we draw the service to a close, I invite you to say the words of blessing together with me. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. And so as we go out into the world, we remind ourselves that God is at work in us, that God is fashioning us to be bearers of the light that has come into the world, the light that the darkness neither understands nor has overcome. And so as we go, we go out as people of the epiphany, we go out to be people who are going to be the light of God into our world. Let us go then and shine our light into our world. Amen. <laughs>